Hey there, this is Jane from the blog chocolateofsuccess.com and today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily make custom pillows or cushions for your sofa and how to make an invisible zipper even if you don't have an invisible zipper foot for your sewing machine. I'll also be showing you two ways you can finish off your seams if you don't have an overlocking machine or a serger. So let's get to it. To make your pillows you're going to need some fabric, an invisible zipper, cotton thread to match your fabric or contrast in if you'd like, a scissors, some pins and a sewing machine. And if you're using the pink and shears method for, to finish the seams then you need the pink and shears too. You also need the standard zipper foot for your sewing machine and the overlocking foot. I bought one meter of fabric um, which was enough to make two throw pillows and the fabric I chose was 106 centimeters times 100 centimeters so I knew I would have just enough to make my pillows without any wastage. You can read more details um, about this fabric and why I chose this particular um, fabric retailer uh, in the blog post over on the blog. So here I'm just measuring out the size of the cushion and because I'm so tight on fabric I need to be really precise here so that I, I don't mess it up um, and then I won't have enough to make the two cushions. Cut the fabric the same size as your pillow. I'm cutting the fabric the same size as the pillow insert because I want my pillow to be full and plump and I don't want it to have um, what I call saggy corners where the pillow is not quite filled out in the pillow. So if you can't find the size of the pillow on the pillow tag, just use a measuring tape and measure seam to seam to get your measurements. If your fabric has a pattern like mine, decide how you want it to, the pillow to look when it's finished and place a pin or a marker on the bottom edge where you want to insert the invisible zipper. The size of the pillow insert that I'm using for these cushions is 20 by 20 inches or uh, 50 by 50 centimeters. Place the fabric right sides together, center the invisible zipper onto the edge where you inserted the pins or markers and make a small snip with the scissors directly at each end of the zipper. This will help you line up the zipper later when you're sewing. Use the iron to press the rolled edge flat. This will help you get as close as you can to the, to the edge of the zip when you're sewing it with your regular zipper foot. Fold back the top layer of the fabric and unzip the zipper and lay it with the zipper pull face down onto the edge of the fabric and pin that in place. So in other words, you're pinning the right side of the zipper to the right or the patterned side of the fabric. So if I turn it over here, you can see how it's going to look when it's finished. So that's a good idea to always do that. If you're not sure you've pinned in the right place, then you can always turn it over and you'll see this is how it's supposed to look and I've pinned it in the right place. Now you can start sewing the first side of the invisible zipper to the fabric. Just remove the pins as you go down. If your standard zipper foot allows, um, move the needle to the left to make it easier for you to sew really close to the rolled edge of the zipper. You'll need to go a bit wide around the metal part of the zip pull, but don't worry about that because you'll be going back and um, we'll close the zip later and sew that part again. So once you reach the end of the zip, back stitch a few stitches with your sewing machine and then cut your thread.
pin the right side of the second side of the invisible zipper to the right side of your fabric. If you want to make sure that you, you've done this right, you can just open up the fabric after you've pinned it to see how it looks. Now you can see why we snipped the fabric at the bottom of the zip, the, the bottom and the top of the zip, because now you can just line up the second zip to that cut and you'll have a perfectly placed zip. Then just sew the second side of the invisible zipper to the second side of the fabric. Now you need to close the zipper a little bit and go back and sew as tight to the teeth as you can in the spot where the zipper pull was earlier. So now you need to sew the pillow seams together and at this point you can either change over to your standard straight stitch sewing machine foot if you want um, but I just carried on sewing my seams with the standard zipper foot. First pin the fabric together around the edges so that the fabric won't slip or move whilst you're sewing the seams together. So when we start sewing the seams, we're going to start um, just at the end of the zipper. Lay your fabric under the foot and just feel to the edge of the zip. Put your foot down and start sewing from that point. Then start sewing at the bottom of the zip. Back stitch a few stitches and then continue to sew to the end of the fabric. Um, leave about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Oops, sorry, I had to stop there for a bit because my foot fell off, I had to replace it. Leaving the needle in the lowest position in the fabric, lift the foot and pivot the fabric around so that you are ready to sew along the next seam. Then lower the foot and continue sewing continue sewing along the seam of the second edge. Continue to do this all the way around until you've arrived at about two thirds of the way down the fourth side. Backstitch, then cut your thread. So you should have left enough of a gap in the seam to be able to put your hand inside the pillow and pull the zip open a little bit important because you need to be able to turn your pillow cover the right side out once you've finished sewing up your seams and then once you've opened the zip go back and finish sewing the rest of the seam until you arrive back at the zip. Now it's time to finish up the corners. 
So before turning the pillow right side out, cut the excess fabric across the corner edges. By doing this, you'll avoid having a big bulky mass of fabric in the corners when you turn the pillow out and the corners will be nice and crisp. If you don't have an overlocking or surgery machine, you can finish up the raw edges by simply using a pinking shears. Pinking shears are scissors with a serrated edge and you just need to cut the edge of the fabric all the way around. This method is all right if your pillow is not going to get much wear and tear and, and it won't be washed very often. I'm not sure how effective this would be in the long term. It looks quite messy if you ask me um, and if you can manage it, I recommend the, the next method I'm going to tell you about. In my opinion, a much better and long term option is using the overlocking or zigzag stitch. First, you'll need to change over to your overlocking foot. Once you have the, the overlocking foot installed, you'll need to select a zigzag or overlocking stitch on your sewing machine and simply sew around the edges of your seams so that the stitch reaches just over the edge of your fabric. Corners are a little bit fiddly, so just go a little bit more slowly and then it should be all okay. So here you can see both seam finishing methods side by side and I think for me the overlocking stitch does it. It just looks much better quality and I think it's going to last much longer. Now you can uh, turn out your pillow cover. Push your fingers into the corners to push out the fabric and make a nice crisp clean corner. To make it easier to insert the pillow, just fold it in half and push it into the middle of the pillow.
Then it's just a matter of forming the pillow insert and pushing it into the corners. Now you can close your zip and plump up your pillow and you're all finished. So here you can see a photo of the two pillows side by side and the pillow on the left shows how the pillow will look if the invisible zipper is not ironed before it's sewn. The pillow on the right shows how you can almost create the same invisible zipper look with a standard zipper foot by pressing back the rolls of the zip with an iron before sewing. So this method of sewing an invisible zipper with a standard zipper foot is a great compromise if you take the time to prepare the zip beforehand by ironing it. I think I could have achieved an even better look with this if I'd left the iron on longer and thereby pressing out the rolls further. So for making a one-off pillow um, cover, I don't think uh, an invisible zipper foot for your sewing machine is necessary. But if, like me, you're planning on making a lot more pillows um, for, your, for, for your home, then it's probably better to invest in, in an invisible zipper foot because you'll be able to create a more professional look. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more sewing tutorials. Um, and if you liked it, give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.